Hey everybody, Tony here, and welcome to an another video. Now those of you that already know, I love fighting games. They're one of my favorite <laughs> video game genres of all time, and I pretty much already explained in past videos what started my love for them and stuff. Now you're probably all wondering, what am I talking about here? Well, since you already all know that I'm a big fan of fighting games and a big fan of, of the PlayStation, I decided to bring you all my 10 best fighting games on the PlayStation. Now, this will be going from 1 to 10, 1 being at the bottom and 10 being at the top, but we've, we've, already, we've already talked enough here, let's get started here. Number 1, Rage. Primal Rage. Now, I'm sure all you who grew up in the 90s with video games and stuff know what uh, Primal, Rage, Primal Rage was. It basically started off as an arcade game and then was ported to like a lot of home consoles, mainly the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega 32X, and there was also the PlayStation version, obviously, which is the footage you're seeing here. Now, Primal Rage is basically, in my opinion, Mortal Kombat with dinosaurs. Specifically because, like, um, you got the blood, you got, like, like similar moves that are like from Mortal Kombat and stuff. And you got the uh, finishing moves as well, which I could never figure out and still can't figure out because, like, the instruction manual doesn't really tell me much on how to do the finishing moves and I don't really feel like like going on the internet and, and, and printing out a, a, a move list and stuff like that. But I'll admit right now, the game is pretty short, and once you beat the game, there's nothing else to do. But if you're looking for mindless fun in it, and you like fighting games with dinosaurs and stuff like that, and you like games that are similar to Mortal Kombat, then this game is definitely, definitely for you. Number 2, Kensei Sacred Fist. Now, Kensei Sacred Fist is a fighting game that has pretty much been forgotten about, and a lot of people don't, people don't really care for. The game did not really get that, that many good reviews and stuff like that, but to me, it's a decent fighting game <laughs> in its own stuff like that. I mean, as you can see here, here the game has uh, some some great looking graphics, like great character models and stuff, and a good diverse cast of characters, and like awesome music, which which was which is definitely some of the best music you'll ever hear in like a video game and stuff. And it it, it also has, has some some fantastic voice acting, ranging from from multiple languages. Some of them speak Japanese, some of them speak in English and stuff, and so on, so on. But the one problem I have with this game is, is the controls. The controls are really stiff and delayed at times. And I, I guess I can see why this is probably why, 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 why a lot of people didn't really like this game that much. But the stiff controls aren't that bad. They don't take take that much time to get used to because like um when you just gotta like play around with it for about like five minutes or so before you get used to the controls. And once you do, the game can be a lot of fun and stuff. And the game is almost as good as like as like Tekken 3 and stuff, but because of the of the controls and stuff like that, which took some time to get used to, it kind of hurts the game a little bit. But it's still a good game. It's nowhere near as bad as like where like people like on Game Fest with the critics were, were saying about the game and stuff. So definitely pick this up because it's one of those rare gems. It's not too expensive, but it's one of those rare gems that have been forgotten about when it comes to fighting games. Number three, Dead or Alive. Now, I'm sure all you know what Dead or Alive is, and I've already mentioned my Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Fortune review that I, that I had three other games before that. This one, Dead or Alive, and Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore, and Dead or Alive 5 Last Round. Now, the original Dead or Alive, which, which of course is in the arcade as well, was ported to the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn, and then was also re-released on, on the Xbox as, Dead or Alive, Dead or, as in the Dead or Alive Ultimate package. Of course, I'm be of course I only had the PlayStation version, and the PlayStation version I heard is much different from the, from the arcade version and Sega Saturn version. But I never really played those that much, so I really don't have anything else to have anything to say about that. But what I can say here about Dare Alive is that it's a fun fighting game, and it pretty much is a nice introduction to the series that grew and, and expanded as time went on. And yes, I will I will admit that like some of my, uh, of my favorite characters were not in this game because it's the first game, like um. Helena and Hitomi and stuff, but we got a, a lot of a lot of great 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 cast characters here, and the game has some decent looking graphics, uh, decent controls, and decent gameplay. But the problem is that like like the game is over too fast and stuff. I mean like I know fighting are over over or aren't that long, but I feel like this one just went by a little too quickly. But if you have someone to play with, with like with multiplayer, or like um, you like, or if you have a lot of replay available with unlocking all the costumes, then this game is definitely, definite, definitely for you. That's why it's number three on the list. Number four, Evil Zone. Now, Evil Zone here is kind of a weird fighting game, weird in a good way. This, this, this fighting game here is, is like a futuristic sci-fi anime-like fighting game that has like um, it is kind of kind of presented like in 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 anime. TV show format. It's basically like has um 
talks about about like what like what the character does when you pick when you pick the character and you, and you get a cutscene of them interacting and basically like it is something different that that I that I've never seen in, in fighting games before. Like um, you got some cool ass ass moves here like a laser and um. I will admit, the English dub is not so good, I wish they would've just kept it in Japanese and stuff, but I really can't stand, can't say anything here, but like, I, I can honestly say that like, and this is something cool, like I've never seen anything like this before, and I didn't, I didn't get this game when growing up, I got it later on, but what you get here is like, an interesting fighting game in a good way, and if you like sci-fi anime stuff, along with fighting games, this game is for you. Number 5, Dynasty Warriors. Now, I'm sure everyone knows what Dynasty Warriors is, because Dynasty Warriors has been around, like, it's still going around this day. But I'm sure a lot of you didn't know this, but the first Dynasty Warriors wasn't a hack and slash game. It was a fighting game, and actually a decent one at that. And the truth is, I kind of wish Dynasty Warriors stuck, with, stuck with, 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 with being a fighting game instead of being a hack and slash game, because I like fighting games more. But as you can you can see here, like um, it's got the Japanese voice acting. It's got it's got a little bit of stiffness in the controls, but it's not as bad as Kensei Sacred Fist. And some of the, spe and the special moves here are awesome. And um, there's not that many characters there's here in the game. There's only like three unlockable characters to, 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 that you can unlock from as far as I know. But it's a mindless list fighting fighting game fun. And like the ancient warrior, if they if like the ancient Japanese samurai era, then you'll be in for a treat here because this game has has that has that that that, that Japanese samurai feel to it. And there's nothing else to say about that. It's just it's it's a fun fighting game. Number six, Mortal Kombat 4. I know I already reviewed this game, but those of you probably never saw my re review. I'll explain a, a little bit of it here. Now, Mortal Kombat 4 is the very first 3D Mortal Kombat game that was ever made. Of course, it first started on the arcades, obviously, then was ported to, it was ported to the PlayStation and the N64, the PC, and the, and the Sega Dreamcast as Mortal Kombat Gold. Now, Mortal Kombat 4 is definitely my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite game in the Mortal Kombat series. One thing that, that they improved here is was that really high difficulty that difficulty with, with the opponent AI would just like kick your ass and would not even give you a chance. And it, it's got, it introduces some new characters to it. Introduces the weapons, the we you, you get weapons in this game as well. And it's, it's just basically an all-around fun fighting game. But a lot of people didn't really like it for some reason because a lot of people were bashing the graphics and saying that the graphics weren't as good as good as like other fighting games. And the game was too easy and stuff. But the game was not too easy. The game was perfectly balanced, like how the like how the other Mortal Kombat games should have been. Now I'm not bashing the other Mortal Kombat games. I like the other Mortal Kombat games. But that high difficulty was really kind of kind of a turn off when it, when it came to fighting games, and that's why I like I like I like this game even more. And if you if you have a PlayStation or an N N64 or you can you, you have or you have an arcade near you, try out this game. It's worth it and a lot of fun. Number seven, Bloody Roar Two. Now I first got into the uh, <laughs> the Bloody Roar series when playing the first one and stuff. And the first one I was not a big fan of because of because it was it was hard to pull off special moves and just like the weird button combinations with the controls. But I gave it time with, with the first one I ended up liking it eventually. But then we got Bloody Roar 2, the new breed, which is what it was called in, in Europe and stuff. And a lot of the problems I had with the first Bloody Roar, they improved here. And they even introduced two of my favorite characters of the of the Bloody Roar series, Jenny the Bat and Sheena the Leopard. Now, those of you who never played a Bloody Roar game, Bloody Roar is a game where where the characters can turn into these animal creatures called zoanthropes, like, and, and make them all powerful. Like, Jenny here, who's the character playing as, can turn into a bat. Sheena can turn into a leopard. Uh, you, 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 can, you can turn into a rabbit, a tiger, and so on, so on. And like, it, it's pretty cool how 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 these how they can turn into animals and just and just fight and stuff like that and just use special moves. It's really cool. Very very interesting and a very creative idea. Number 8, Battle of the Arena Toshinden 2. Now, I already mentioned that Battle of the Arena Toshinden was basically a launch title for the PlayStation, and it pretty much became obsolete when, and, not, and, and not playable much anymore when, for the launch, when, when Tekken came out. But to me, I still found it, I still found it, found it funny because it was the first fighting game with weapons and such. But then, we get Battle of the Arena Toshinden 2, which in my opinion, is, is better in many ways than, than the first one. This game came out a, a year after Tekken, and man, they improved a lot. 
The controls are better, the graphics are better, and my favorite char character, Sophia, is still in, in the game, and, she, and she's a lot stronger than, than she was before. And they kept it in J kept it with the Japanese voice acting, and and I know a lot of people didn't like that, but I liked how they kept it in with the Japanese Japanese these dialogue because it sounds much better than 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 the English dub from the first game and and the third game. The third game didn't even have the Japanese voice acting either, which was kind of weird. But you have a lot a, a, a lot of modes here, here modes here. You got like one player battle. You got full battle. Which you can battle all the opponents and stuff. And and there's like. A lot of more modes more here that you could play, but shame is that more people were playing Mortal Kombat 3 and and Tekken and stuff, and and, and a lot of people just this game really got got passed up by other better fighting games. Now I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't like those other games, I I love them, but this but a lot of people should have given this game a chance, the series a chance. I mean, especially the second one. But if you can, but if you can, if you can find it on on the PlayStation, especially in the long box. Definitely pick it up. It's worth it. Now we got two left here. We're getting down to the wire. Number nine, Soul Blade, also known as Soul Edge in Japan. Now Soul Blade, I remember playing this in the arcade arcade when I when I was 12 years old. I did not know anything about it and stuff until I saw it in in the arcade and I saw it was made by Namco and I was and I, and I immediately drew my attention because Namco was my favorite video game company at the time. And I was thinking, is if this is like if this is anything like the Tekken series, I'm all there and. Surprisingly enough, it was basically like like Tekken, but with weapons and stuff like that, and, and a little bit different. And I was a this is a game that I was obsessed with. I was so obsessed with, with this game, I couldn't stop playing it. I mean, like it, it was it was just that much fun. There was so much 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 to much to do, and still is a lot to do in this game today. And one one of the things that I was a big fan of is the demo track mode, and like. Certain, certain, certain sub subscribers and friends of mine, casual, casual, casual gamer and Dr. Morbus and and Nineteen Ninety Three, know that I'm a huge fan of the demo track mode and and pretty much a huge fan of the game in general, especially the the two characters, Sophia Alexandra, the uh, the uh, Greek goddess warrior, and and Valdo, the Italian merchant, and as you can see, I'm playing as Sophia because she's my favorite female male character and stuff. And one of the things that really caught my attention with this game is the critical edge moves and the unblockable moves. I mean, I know a lot, a lot of fighting games have have these these type of moves and such, but the way Soul Blade had them, it, they looked they looked they looked really awesome. And they have a lot of cool ass throws. You can get ring outs, and there's and the music is, music is awesome too. And like, and it has three soundtracks. Did you you got the constant possession playing here, and a diverse cast of characters like. Samurais and, and merchants and assassins and stuff and ninjas, which I'm out. I mean, I'm planning on reviewing this during the Soul series in the future, since this, this was the first game after Soul. This is the first game the game that came before Soul Calibur and stuff. I will plan on reviewing the Soul series stuff, so I'm not gonna talk much there. But this game is a game I still play to this day, and it's a game I will never get tired of. It is that that much fun, and I recommend people who love fighting games to try and find a copy of this game. Because it's only on the PlayStation, so I recommend you all, all if you have a PlayStation or so, or dust, dust off your PlayStation and go find this game. It's definitely worth it. Okay, now we finally made it to, to the top of the list. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering what it is. Well, before I get started, can I have a drum roll, please? Thank you. Now, as... Okay, that's enough. Stop. Uh, you already did, did the drum roll. Stop! Stop! Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Now, number 10 is... Round Tekken 3. A game that actually, actually came out 20 years ago, and it still stands up as one of my as my all-time favorite fighting game. I'm sure a lot of you knew that this was my favorite, favorite, favorite game of all time, but it's also my favorite fighting game, game of all time as well. Tekken 3... Everything is perfect about this game. The smooth controls, the diverse cast of characters, the story, the graphics, the modes, everything is perfect about this game. And I, there really is much else to say that I had, hasn't been said before about Tekken 3. I mean, it, it's a game that, just like Soul Blade, I still play to this day. I've had Tekken 3 longer than, than, than Soul Blade, obviously. But Tekken 3 will always hold a special place in my heart because 
the, it was actually the, the very for, for the very for, for first fighting game I ever I ever played as a demo wise on the on the PlayStation and stuff because like I already had had Tekken 2 but playing it was the first fighting game demo I ever played as well and seeing how how much they improved over the last two Tekkens really caught my my attention I mean there I have nothing bad to say about about this game at all I mean sure I mean like um the Tekken the, the Tekken Force mode mode was a little short and the character's gun and Dr. Boskanovich are not are not that good of exclusive characters, but I I don't care. I over overlooked those problems, and I still had so much fun with it. I still do have so much fun with it to this day, and there's and like this game always will hold a special place in my heart. It's that much fun. I, I cannot get enough of this game. I mean, this is definitely my go-to fighting game and go-to Tekken game. So those of you who are fans of Tekken and never played this game before and are a big fan of fighting games, this is. That's, this is the game I definitely recommend you all to check out, because you will not know what you're missing, and it's definitely worth it in the end. So, that's pretty much all I gotta, gotta say for my 10 best fighting games on the PlayStation 1. There will be more videos like this in the future, so, so stay tuned. This is Tony, aka TTBurr88, peace and out.